Today we're going to play an improv game of Dungeons & Dragons. We're going to use the Fate Mill Roll D20 as an improv mechanism to answer yes or no questions. Ready? Yep. Yeah, sure, whatever. As you delve deeper into this dungeon, your torchlight casts eerie shadows along the wall. You enter an old, creepy chamber, and inside of this chamber, you're going to find a treasure chest. Hmm, is it a mimic? Maybe. You can't tell by looking at it. I'm going to draw my sword and prepare for an attack, just in case. I'm going to retrieve a chocolate chip cookie from my bag of holding, and I'm going to hold it next to the treasure chest and see if it's hungry. Does the treasure chest eat the chocolate chip cookie? No, the chest isn't hungry, but Nick's sword seems to be very interested in the cookie. Wait, what? My sword is a mimic? Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> well, Mimics really aren't known for their conversational skills. Is the Mimic sword hostile towards us? No, the Mimic doesn't seem hostile, but it really does want that cookie. Well, in that case, I'm going to share my cookie with it. You share the chocolate chip cookie, and the Mimic seems delighted. I want to check out this treasure chest. Is it trapped? No, the chest isn't trapped, but you do see some strange markings on it. It seems like some type of goblin graffiti. I'm going to open it very cautiously. Um, is there gold inside? Yes, actually there is. You open the chest to find a large pile of coins and a few gemstones and a pair of mismatched socks. One polka dot and one stripe. <laughs> I'm definitely keeping these socks. These are really cool. Nice, that's an impressive haul. Is there anything else left in the chest? Yes, there is. There's actually a silver tankard that's also in the chest. I grabbed the tankard. Is it magical? No, it doesn't seem to be, but as you pick up the tankard, it bites you. It's actually a mimic. While the two of you admire your loot, you suddenly hear footsteps approaching from the north. Someone is yelling at you. Can I understand what they're saying? Yes, they're speaking goblin. There's three of them, and the leader is shouting in goblin, Stop them! They're stealing our treasure! Get them! What do you do? Okay, I'm going to try to defuse the situation. I'm going to raise my hands so they know that I'm not a threat. And I'm going to say to them in Goblin, I didn't know that these socks are yours. Surely we can talk this out peacefully. After a brief discussion among themselves, the leader says, Sure, fine, keep the socks. But I want something in return. Give us shiny trinkets. Do they want this mimic tankard? <laughs> Yes, they do. They take the silver tankard and retreat down the northern corridor. And after a few moments, you hear someone shouting and goblin, It's a mimic! That was close. Well done on that, Nick. <sighs> Thanks, Wally. Let's definitely make it a point not to mess with sock collectors again, especially goblin sock collectors. Sounds good. The two of you gather your loot, your mimic sword, and continue exploring the dungeon. Now that we have seen the Fate Mill D20 in action, let's take a closer look. So the Fate Mill D20 is said to spark your imagination. So besides being an improv type of a die, this can also function as our regular D20 as we have numbers 1 through 20 on the die. Now there are 11 different combinations that you can get on the die and all of them are designed to answer yes or no questions. So you have answers such as no, yes but, maybe, no and, yes but, yes and 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 so on the fate mill d20 even comes with an instruction manual this is version two of the die and it tells you how to use the die and even gives you some example as if you were playing a game can i see anything down the hallway and there are several different answers that you could use with the fate mill d20 so when your players ask you a question using the fate mill d20 and rolling it is going to be a great way to improv a game or if you're playing a solo adventure you can do that as well and in a solo game your dungeon master is going to be the fate mill d20 now the fate mill d20 is a 35 millimeter die so it's going to be a lot bigger than your normal dungeons and dragons 20 sided dice now there was an original version that was a little bit smaller and there are only some of the misprints left and Elton was kind enough to send me one of the misprints so I will definitely add this to my collection. There are still a few on the website if you want to get one of those and pick them up. But going forward this is going to be your main die this 35 millimeter d20 that's going to be great to answer yes or no questions play improv or for solo play. 
And of course, if you'd like to get the Fate Mail D20 from Tower House Creative for yourself, I'll put links in the description below. When you do receive this, you're going to receive a package that's going to include quite a few different things. You're definitely going to get the D20 which again is a nice size die. This thing looks absolutely stunning. It is a combination of blacks and blues and I really love the way that it looks. You're going to get the instructions on how to spark your imagination, how to use it, a sample of using it. You're also going to get a holographic sticker. So the Fate Mail D20, a little skull there. And I'll add that to my collection as well. And finally, the folks over at Tower House Creative have included an entire fictional backstory for the Fate Mail D20. So so be sure to take a look and read that and find out a little bit more about this die. So I guess only one question remains. Do I add the Fate Mail D20 to my Dungeon Master Toolkit? The answer is yes, and I'm super excited about it. Thank you very much for watching, and on to the next.